Hello friends, uh, in our earlier four lectures on photosynthesis, we have uh, emphasized the history of this unique process. We have also talked about the photosynthetic pigments and of course, the light reaction and the whole ergonomics of the process of trapping of solar energy and uh, converting it into certain intermediate products, which could now be available to the so called dark reaction for photosynthesis. We are going to start precisely today the dark reactions in photosynthesis, which is also nicknamed as uh, the Calvin cycle and of course, it has various other uh, synonyms. Let me first uh, recapitulate a few concepts uh, to you just to get back into the mode of uh, photosynthesis. The two stages of photosynthesis that we often talk about are the light reactions or the so-called photochemical reactions since they are entirely dependent on uh, light and they may even have a Q10 of 1. The other, the Kelvin cycle which we are going to dwell upon today and uh, it is also called as the Kelvin Benson cycle or the dark reactions. Very soon we are going to see that the term dark reaction itself uh, needs to be corrected, redefined, even negated. So, uh, the dark reaction is one of the unique steps which is going to take its energy from the light reaction and as we know that the two main products of uh, light reaction were ATP which we defined as photophosphorylation and NADPH which we call as the reducing power. Uh, together these two products constituted what we defined as the assimilatory power. We also emphasized in the earlier lecture that it would be basically the non-cyclic photophosphorylation mode which would be responsible for producing the entire assimilatory power which means both ATP and NADPH and if this were to happen then it was obligatory that both the photosystems would be operative that is the PS1 which was greater than 680 nanometers and PS2 where water was being split or and it was running, it was a high energy system which was operating at less than 680 nanometers. Now, these two products would go into the Benson Kelvin cycle and they would be utilized. We had given a very oblique simile of this entire process to something like a solar cell, which would be uh, taking energy from sun, converting it into one form of energy and upon its need or requirement, it would then give the energy in the form of heat or light, whichever form is possible. Let us ask ourselves a question in the beginning. When we have talked about the production of ATP and its necessity in the uh, foremost reaction or the light reaction, does it give us a false idea? that is photosynthesis an endergonic reaction or an exergonic reaction which means ultimately does it produce energy or uh, production of energy is in fact a wrong term does it generate energy or is it an energy requiring process actually the answer would be that photosynthesis is an endergonic reaction and it requires the input of energy to occur and where, from where is this energy going to come it is going to come from in, in the form of sunlight. And uh, if we were to graphically depict the process uh, of uh, photosynthesis into various steps, it would be absolutely clear that energy is not made. Energy in fact is transformed. So, uh, we have told repeatedly that green plants or the chlorophyll containing plants are not the producers of energy. They are in fact the transformers, transducers or converters of energy and this process is accomplished through uh, photosynthesis. Actually same is true for cellular respiration also because in cellular respiration we find that uh, one form of energy that is food is being converted into another form of energy. 
So, that means light is the factor which is of prime importance and one form of this energy would now be utilized for the formation of ATP and NADPH and in turn the light reactions are going to produce them and ultimately we would find that uh, the Kelvin cycle is uh, which is operative in the stroma is going to make organic compounds. Now, what does this actually mean? It means that the organic compounds or the carbohydrates or sugars to put it simply that we are talking about are going to be produced from light. That means a kind of a conversion process. So, that means each of the boxes which we just saw uh, would actually be containing energy, but it is a different question that the form of energy would be different. Earlier it was in the form of photons, photons triggered a photochemical process and a redox reaction and then finally uh, the uh, ATP and NADPH2 were formed and then the other box which converted the energy from a non or unusable form that was light into a usable form which you could use later and that would be in the form of organic compounds and this entire process requires the steps which are the different steps that we talked about. Uh, talking of the Kelvin cycle, we find that uh, the Kelvin cycle is also one of the most uh, fundamental uh, processes which is taking place and we call it as the fixation of carbon from the atmosphere. What do we mean by this? We actually mean that the carbon dioxide is being picked up by a series of well coordinated and regulated reactions uh, from the atmosphere and it is being converted into organic compounds like glucose or other sugars. In, in plants of course, we know that the storage product is not glucose, it is uh, sucrose and uh, this entire process will take place in the chloroplast. So, in other words, the carbon atoms from the carbon dioxide are in fact being fixed into organic compounds and this process is called as carbon fixation. This whole process takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast. The entire gambit of reactions or the so called photochemical reactions of uh, photosynthesis 1 occurred in the grana. Uh, the Benson Calvin cycle has various synonyms as I mentioned before. Uh, this was actually the whole cycle was elucidated by Professor Melvin Calvin and his associate uh, Andrew Benson and his postdoctoral uh, candidate James A. Basham at the University of California, Berkeley. And uh, for this, uh, for the elucidation of the cycle, uh, Professor Calvin was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1961. Actually, uh, Melvin Calvin uh, later wrote that the success of his uh, discovery and the elucidation of the cycle was primarily based on some of the successful techniques which were given uh, by uh, people working in the area of uh, radioactive carbon tracers like uh, <coughs> the C14 and we know Rubin and Kamen were the pioneers in the field and it was their work which helped uh, Calvin to find out through the tracing of the path of carbon in the entire cycle to find out as to what was the first visible product, what was in fact the first stable product and it was by this technique of uh, radioactive tracer and chromatography that led uh, Melvin Calvin and his associates to give the entire cycle. Uh, there are various synonyms as we mentioned. They are also called as Blackman reaction. Now, this was a legacy as we have learned in history earlier that uh, uh, Professor Blackman was the person who talked about the part 2 of photosynthesis having a Q10 of 2 or 3 and uh, we even mentioned that uh, later when we came to uh, defining the term it was called as light reaction and, and dark reaction but not to confuse that the dark reaction was basis of, of Blackman because Blackman was not a, a black man either. 
It is also popularly called as Calvin cycle or Calvin Benson cycle. Uh, a more technical name of this cycle would be photosynthetic carbon reduction cycle. Now, where does the carbon of the carbon dioxide actually get reduced? Uh, we would see when we when we are looking at the intricate details of this cycle. It is also called as reductive pentose pathway because we know that the beginning of this whole cycle is going to be based on five carbon compounds like ribulose five phosphate, ribulose one five biphosphate, and it's these particular. Uh, uh, reactions of the five carbon sugars which are then uh, converted into three, seven and, f and, and the four other intermediates and simply it is called as C3 cycle. C3 cycle it is not called because there were three co-discoverers. It is called as C3 cycle because uh, perhaps the first stable compound of the cycle is a three carbon compound 3 PGA or 3 phosphoglycerate which gives it the most popular name or the C3 cycle on the basis of which the plants in which this cycle is operative they are also nicknamed as the C3 plants. Uh, basically this uh, cycle is divided into three phases. The first step is carboxylation uh, which means that the carbon dioxide is incorporated into one of the acceptors and then the product whatever is formed is reduced and this particular reduction shows the reactions which we would see uh, very soon are somewhat opposite of the process of glycolysis that we see in respiration of course. Uh, here uh, there are certain fundamental differences but the, 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 the products are uh, roughly the same. And then the third of the processes is regeneration because for the whole cycle to continue uh, the regeneration of the primary acceptor which is RUBP or ribulose 1,5 biphosphate is absolutely essential. Once the process goes it has to get going and for the continuation the third step is equally if not more important than the previous two. Uh, the first uh, step is carboxylation which we also popularly call as the dark pickup of CO2. We are always using the term dark at the end when we are talking about uh, the concept of regulation of uh, Calvin cycle perhaps we will get rid of this term dark but it is now so deeply entrenched into our literature that we uh, do not seem to have uh, got rid of it. Uh, the CO2 fixation in a 3 compound is going to give rise to the first stable product which is a 3 carbon compound called PGA or 3 phosphoglycerate. Now the primary acceptor is RUBP which is again a 5 carbon compound. Uh, and which is the acceptor. Actually this 5 carbon compound has two fragments. One is a 3 carbon fragment and the other is a 2 carbon fragment and uh, the carbon dioxide uh, attaches to the 2 carbon active fragment. Uh, one should at this stage also be very uh, familiar with the stoichiometry of the entire process. How many molecules are we going to start with and how many carbons so that our calculation in future becomes easy and the enzyme which catalyzes this primary reaction is also called as the priming reaction is none other than the uh, famous Rubisco. We will talk about Rubisco also in details uh, subsequently. Now Rubisco is, uh, is uh, having a very long name uh, ribulose 1, 5 biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. And this uh, would help the combination of one molecule of carbon dioxide to a 5 carbon molecule of RUBP. So 5 plus 1, 6, the product becomes a 6 carbon sugar and this 6 carbon sugar immediately breaks down. It does not stay as such and it gives rise to 2 molecules of 3 um, uh, PGA which is a 3 carbon compound. The process actually uh, means that first uh, the two carbon fragment 
is uh, being acted upon and then later uh, through the process of formation of an intermediate compound, it would give rise to two molecules of uh, PGA. The first step of course would mean reduction and the other would be that uh, a molecule of water is uh, released. Uh, looking at a little more details of uh, this whole process, we find uh, that uh, first it is the enol dialate which is going to be formed and later a keto intermediate compound is formed which finally gives rise to 3 PGA. So, uh, this process is so quick that uh, we uh, seldom mention this step and we always say that the first stable compound is uh, none other than 3 PGA and we go subsequently. Uh, before we go or and enter the, the Kelvin cycle, I think it will be worthwhile for you to understand a little more about the wonder enzyme Rubisco. If you remember in one of our previous uh, discourses, I had mentioned that one of the most important and the most fascinating coincidences in nature was that the action and the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll were nearly overlapping, which made it as the wonder pigment for photosynthesis. Perhaps the second very pleasant uh, coincidence in nature has been the origin of Rubisco, because Rubisco is uh, a copper containing large proteinaceous enzyme which has a molecular weight of about 56 kilodaltons and uh, incidentally it was also discovered by Melvin Calvin. But then at that time in the 1940s one did not know much about uh, the oxygenase property or the bifunctional property and this enzyme was earlier called as carboxy dismutase. Of course, there are various other synonyms of Rubisco and uh, the way it is written is also in the upper and the lower caps. It is also called as RUVP CAS or RUPCO. So, these are various uh, synonyms for uh, Rubisco. Why I said was a pleasant uh, coincidence because when this enzyme originated, then it was perhaps before the so called oxygen revolution and it was taking up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and the level of oxygen or free oxygen was extremely low in the atmosphere. And once the oxygen reached a certain stage as it is now say about 20 percent, then the oxygenase property of this enzyme uh, started functioning. We will have to lo uh, have a lot of comment to make on it once we reach the uh, concept of photorespiration. So, this enzyme is unique in various respects and uh, this enzyme actually occurs in all the photosynthetic organisms and if one looks at the quantitative uh, survey of higher plants, say we will find that 6 milligrams per milligram of chlorophyll is uh, nothing but this enzyme. So, therefore, uh, it will be uh, not premature to say that it is considered to be the most abundant protein which is present on this planet. And imagine uh, 4 into 10 to the power 13 grams of this enzyme is made every second. Student of uh, Students of enzymology would know that there are various enzymes with very high turnover that is the amount of substrate molecules that they could catalyze per second, but the turnover of Rubisco is terribly slow, it is only 3 to 4 molecules of carbon dioxide per second. So, it can easily be called one of the slowest enzymes uh, that we know of. So, on one hand we say it is the most abundant, it is the most efficient and on the other we are tagging it as the slowest. How does it compensate for, for this inadequacy? Of, of a low speed or of low velocity. It is the sheer abundance of this enzyme or that means it is present in such large amounts that it can now compensate amply for the extremely slow activity because there is no other way 
that the, the kinetics of this enzyme could be altered. Now, according to the uh, EC commission number, it has uh, a number of 4.1.1.39 in heart plants. The holo enzyme is a very complicated one. It requires ATP and magnesium divalent cations and uh, the subunits are uh, categorized into two that is two types of dissimilar types of subunits they are present in equal numbers. We have four large subunits uh, which are depicted in, in blue and uh, the small units which are depicted in red. So, when there are eight units or subunits there are eight active sites per holozyme one within the larger and the other in the smaller unit each. Uh, Rubisco surprisingly has a very high affinity for the substrate RUBP and uh, the active site can accept both CO2 and O2 as a substrate. So, this obviously would mean that uh, there are certain minor conformational changes depending upon the relative proportions of carbon dioxide and uh, oxygen which are going to dictate uh, the, the preference for either of these two substrates namely carbon dioxide and oxygen. Uh, surprisingly oxygen has a very high affinity for the active site and uh, if we compare their binding rates the binding would of oxygen would be much higher than that of CO2. So, that means a plant has to maintain a high levels or an availability of carbon dioxide in order to run Calvin cycle. Otherwise, another cycle which we will talk about later the C2 cycle would be predominant. So, that means if the CO2 ratio is high then only the carboxylase activity would be favored and that uh, carboxylase activity is actually needed for running the Calvin cycle. And if the oxygen is more uh, somehow uh, then the route will now be directed towards photorespiration because now it would be the oxygenase activity of this enzyme which would be functional. So, that means the conformational changes in the enzyme are being regulated by the the relative proportions of uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide uh, together. The two carbon molecule would be formed in case the carbon dioxide is not available uh, so much or to a certain threshold level and this two carbon compound which would be formed uh, would be phosphoglycolate and uh, this is a fairly toxic compound later it needs to be changed or needs to be transformed and metabolized by a cycle which we call as the photorespiration or the C2 cycle. Rubisco is also unique in other sense also because uh, it is among very few enzymes which can also be autocatalytic. By autocatalytic we mean that it can regenerate one of its own substrates while having a synthetic capacity at the same time. <clears throat> the second aspect once PGA is formed of uh, is the reduction which we had called earlier as the carbon reduction cycle. So, that means the 3 PGA or the 3 phosphoglycerate has now to be converted into 3 carbon carbohydrates uh, so that they could act as starting materials for the synthesis of hexose sugars or of sucrose. Now, it the first part that we talked about or the pickup of carbon dioxide or carboxylation did not require any energy, but it is the second part or reduction which requires ATP and NADPH. So, basically this is an ATP requiring or, or an endergonic set of reactions. Now, the various steps which we see are going to be almost reverse of the process of glycolysis. As I said before, 
the fundamental difference would be that glycolysis in respiration uses NADH which is the reduced coenzyme 1. Whereas, in our present uh, study we find that Calvin cycle uses NADPH which is the reduced coenzyme 2. Uh, a little survey of the uh, of the uh, cycle shows us that uh, the PGA is first phosphorylated and then it is converted to uh, a molecule of 1,5 phosphoglycerate or biphosphoglycerate. So, that means now phosphorylation has incorporated the phosphate and later this would now get reduced into the uh, other equivalents that is phosphoglyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate which are both 3 carbon compounds and it is from here that the other part of photosynthesis would start. At this point it is important to mention that uh, the compounds which are formed uh, they would also require inorganic phosphate and there is a triose phosphate antipode which is present on the membrane of the chloroplast from where we would find that the inner chloroplast membrane is going to facilitate the dihydroxyacetone phosphate into the cytosol and in return uh, the inorganic phosphate would be coming. Now, this dihydroxyacetone phosphate could also be used directly for the synthesis of sugar. So, this is a, a, a type of an antipode which is available in the membrane. This antipode is vital because there needs to be a continuous input of inorganic phosphates which are needed for running of the, the, the Kelvin cycle. The third step is the series of 10 enzyme catalyzed reactions which are uh, one of them is ATP requiring and they would regenerate the RUBP. So, we would find that uh, this type of the regeneration seems to be similar to the pentose phosphate pathway running backwards. The second step was of glycolytic reversal. The third step seems to be the PPP reverse steps. Now, this is the most intricate part of uh, the Kelvin cycle where we find that uh, the, the 10 type uh, of uh, reactions which were going on say for example, the through 2 carbon uh, the 2 3 carbon compounds which were isomers namely the uh, glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate they would isomerize they would give rise to fructose 6 phosphate and then uh, one of them would combine to give rise to 6 and 3 9 which would break into 5 and 4 and then the uh, ultimately a 7 carbon compound namely pseudoheptulose would be formed and then uh, pseudoheptulose is 7 it will combine with another 3 to give rise to now 10 carbons which would be split into 2 car 2 uh, molecules of 5 carbon each and ultimately they would give rise to a regeneration product or ribulose 1 5 biphosphate. If one looks carefully the last step also is ATP requiring. So, this entire uh, labyrinthine set of reactions are involved for the regeneration of RUBP that is the primary acceptor. If we just glance through the uh, stoichiometry of this entire process, we would find that how the uh, 3 and 3 carbon compounds uh, combine together and it is the, the 3 uh, splittings which are going on and 4 plus 3 becomes 7. Now, one thing that needs to be understood very clearly is that in a 6 carbon compound the first phosphate would be at number 6 position and if there is another one required then it would take the number 1 position and when there is a uh, dephosphorylation then the first phosphate would go from the 6 and then the last one or the second one would go from position number 1. So, ultimately the whole process 
uh, if we glance towards the process, it would mean that when one molecule of carbon dioxide is completing the Calvin cycle, it would require uh, some ATP and some NADPH2 and this would be 3 ATP or 2 ATP we have to see in the entire equation. <coughs> the process would be uh, of ATP versus NADPH and this would decide as to what is going to be the final outcome of the process. We find that uh, the ATP molecules are required at two places and the NADPH at one. So, the process complete process would mean that there are 12 molecules of ATP required and 6 molecules of NADPH are required. Now, do we have a proof of uh, the entire stoichiometry? Yes. And we ultimately see that uh, 6 plus 3 or 9 ATP molecules uh, would be there for uh, 3 carbon compounds. So, that means a total of 18 ATP molecules would be needed for a complete hexose molecule to be formed and 12 molecules of NADPH would be formed. We are depicting the Kelvin cycle in various forms. So, if we have a final uh, call at the um, energy input of the process, we would find that when CO2 enters the system, 6 molecules of carbon dioxide in fact have to combine with 6 molecules of RUBP. If we were running with 1, just 1 turn of Calvin cycle, it would have made only 1 sixth of the hexose sugar. So, we take now 6 molecules. The energy input would mean that uh, the products are going to be 12 molecules of a 3 carbon compound or the phosphoglyceraldehyde. Now, 12 molecules of a 3 carbon compound means that the original 30 of the RUBP to them were added 6 molecules of carbon dioxide making it 36. And now, how do we have a division? Because we have to have a regeneration also. And in this entire process, ATP and NADPH are being used uh, to the level of uh, the formation of 12 molecules of C3 compound of a high energy form. In other words, we find that uh, out of the molecules of 12 molecules of PGAL or glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate that we had, two of them, now two means six carbons, they would be used to make glucose. Now, what will happen to the other ones? The remaining 10 molecules of the 3 carbon compound, which is phosphoglyceraldehyde, will be converted back into now six molecules of RUBP. So, this is how the regeneration takes place. Glancing at the balance sheet of photosynthesis, uh, how many of the ATP molecules are needed to make one molecule of PGA from carbon dioxide? Now, PGA was the first step. So, that means each turn fixes one carbon dioxide. One carbon dioxide is not enough because we require six to form a hexose molecule. So, it would mean three turns and three turns uh, would all uh, would be not be enough because it has to be six turns to make a hexose molecule. So, in a nutshell, the final equation comes to be six molecules of carbon dioxide plus twelve molecules of NADPH and of course twelve protons and eighteen ATP. Now, this eighteen ATP uh, are required to fix. 6 molecules of carbon dioxide and ultimately to form 1 molecule of hexose sugar. In the process, 12 molecules of NADP are regenerated and 6 molecules of water are formed. Actually, 12 are needed and 18 are formed. So, ultimately this process releases 
six molecules of water in the product side and 18 pi are required. So, that means out of this entire productivity which we have seen about 50 percent would go for uh, the basic needs for our respiration or the respiration of plants. And some of this phosphoglyceraldehyde could be uh, channelized to make various amino acids, lipids, glucose, fructose of course are there and the established storage products like glycogen, starch and, and certain skeletal products like cellulose. So, that means 12 molecules of NADPH and 18 molecules of, AT, uh, of ATP are the terms or the figures that we have to remember, which would be helpful to us to ascertain a comparison of productivity in terms of C4 and CAM cycles, which we would study subsequently. In other words, 2 molecules of NADPH and 3 ATP are required for the reduction of one molecule. When I was talking about the ratio of these two in the beginning, what we really meant was the ratio of ATP and NADP seems to be 1.5 and this ratio is not constant for all the different types of plants because subsequently we would see that in case of C4 plants, this ratio is entirely uh, different. Uh, no process can take place without regulation. This is a process which we nicknamed as, as dark reaction, but now we have to ask ourselves a question, is this process really occurring in dark? Is it really independent of light? So, we have to see how the various enzymes of Calvin cycle are being regulated. As I mentioned before, Rubisco is a unique enzyme because there are very few enzymes that are autocatalytic which can regenerate its own substrates. There is a very intricate mechanism with Rubisco with which it could uh, regenerate itself. And uh, what will happen is that the concentration of RUBP is naturally going to fall at night because uh, the, there is no uh, light reaction going on and the products are being uh, utilized and they will uh, ultimately get uh, exhausted. So, the carbon which was destined to form sugars is now channelized to form RUBP to meet next day's demand, demands because the moment there is sunshine, the process is going to be triggered and from where would you get RUBP? to fix atmospheric carbon. So, that needs to be replenished and that would be uh, through the channelization of some of the carbon which is present uh, in the process. Uh, so, that means when it is required the carbon can even be retained not the entire carbon is, uh, is being uh, channelized to the PCR cycle or the Calvin cycle and because some of it is required for the regeneration of RUVP. So, conventionally uh, 3 or 4 additional molecules of, of carbon dioxide could be uh, channelized back rather than uh, going the all of them going towards the formation of the carbohydrates or the sugars. So, this is a very intricate balance for where uh, the, the preparation for the next morning is also done. We again now take seriously the question is uh, the dark reaction really occurring in dark because uh, the entire history of photosynthesis was revolving around light and dark reactions. Are they really independent of light? It would mean that uh, the all the dark reactions uh, they would uh, they would be uh, running independently of whatever is the light intensity or the light duration. Well, this is an incorrect statement and now it needs a re modification and reappraisal. Actually, the activity of some of the enzymes of the Calvin cycle are indirectly affected by light. So, at the most we could say that dark reaction is, is uh, affected indirectly by light and some of the key reactions of dark reaction do not operate at all in dark. 
So, that means it would be wrong to say that the dark reaction occurs really in dark. So, that means this is a type of a regulation where there is a control of the activity of the cycle and these enzymes have to be activated by certain changes, certain metabolic changes and these changes are obviously going to be uh, initiated by light reaction itself. Because in light reaction there is a lot of change in pH, there is a lot of change in the, the uh, proton gradients which are going to initiate some of the key enzymes of uh, Kelvin cycle. Uh, Rubisco, fructose 1, 6 biphosphatase, pseudoheptulose 1, 7 biphosphatase which is required for the regeneration, phosphoribulokinase which is the last enzyme which incorporates uh, ATP to form uh, RUBP and of course the key enzyme NADP uh, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. These are the enzymes which are uh, indirectly affected by light. So, they are light modulated. So, we can say that uh, why should the dark reaction occur much in dark? Because uh, we find that it will be really futile to run because glycolysis is running, the PPP is running. Why should it waste ATP and NADPH? why not utilize for the for the other processes. So, in other words light would activate and dark would in fact uh, inhibit the Calvin cycle contrary to what we define in terms of the dark reaction in several ways. Now, actually how does the regulation take place? As I said it is the proton gradients of the light reaction which are the, the, the primary modulators. Light reaction actually generates H plus and there is a net movement of protons into the thylakoid lumen. So, therefore, there would be a proton gradient which would be as high equivalent to 3, the order of 3 in magnitude which is going to be generated. As a result, if there are so many protons, the pH uh, when there is a proton gradient and, and the, the grana is full of H ions, then the pH of the stroma which was originally to the tune of pH 5 is uh, in the dark is going to increase to pH 8 uh, during light. Now, this would be a change of a pH 3 in magnitude which is going to activate all the above mentioned the, the six enzymes that we had seen earlier. So, they are all going to be uh, modulated and uh, there is a charge imbalance and if there is a charge imbalance the pH has changed from 5 to 8. Now, the magnesium ions will move out of the lumen into the stroma that means this would be opposite to the direction of the proton flux and this is also going to stimulate uh, the rubisco and other enzymes. So, that means it is basically a light activated electron and proton transfer which takes place between the grana and the stroma which is going to regulate the whole process of uh, the enzyme activation. So, it is uh, clear that CO2 is not just a substrate when we say the dark pickup of CO2. In fact, it is acting like a modulator itself in, uh, in controlling the, the activity of Rubisco. So, that means uh, in a nutshell it is carbon dioxide, magnesium ions and the pH of course, which are the three main contributory factors for the activation of the enzyme Rubisco. And whenever there is going to be an increase in pH in the lumen, the uh, carbon dioxide is going to first react with some of the amino groups of the specific lysine of the active site of Rubisco and this would result in the formation of a carbamate. Now, carbamate is an intermediate compound and uh, in this process when there was increase in pH and alkalinity was increasing, then there is a release of two protons during the carbamate formation. 
at the same time magnesium ion concentration changes and when magnesium ion concentration increases then there is a coordination of the magnesium ions to the carbamate and this forms a carbamate magnesium complex. It is this carbamate a magnesium complex which is now the active form of Rubisco. And finally, carbon dioxide binds to this activated enzyme to release two molecules of PGA. So, the whole process does not seem to be as simple uh, because carbamate process is also important. And uh, it is also seen that there is another form of regulation of Rubisco which is through the enzyme uh, Rubisco activase. This uh, reaction requires ATP, it is an energy requiring reaction and this ATP inclusion would bring about certain structural changes in uh, Rubisco and it is these structural changes which will activate the enzyme uh, and uh, by carbamation and metal binding. So, that means the, the substrates the carbon dioxide itself is a substrate which is going to act as a modulator of uh, Rubisco and through the through the carbamate formation and through the enzyme Rubisco activase. Uh, there is another uh, mention of uh, enzymes which are controlled by another or via another channel and this regulation is through ferredoxin thioredoxin system. This is also a very important channel for the modulation of these enzyme. Actually, thyro, thyroredoxin is a small protein which is having a disulfide uh, which is reduced in the chloroplasts and uh, it is reduced via the uh, light activated electron transfer and ferredoxins they are very important. And this uh, enzyme is uh, actually comprising ferredoxin, thyroidoxin reductase enzyme and uh, we would find that uh, the it is the reduced form or the oxidized form which is going to be converted and which is also going to be important for the catalytic activity. The photosynthetic uh, activity of electron transport chain the reduced ferredoxin will transform this protein into uh, that is the protein thyroidoxin into a reduced form and the reduced form in turn will convert the target enzyme into a reduced state thereby enhancing the catalytic activity. In other words, it is the reduced form of uh, the enzyme which is actually activated. We depict it by different uh, figures that is the enzyme must be in a reduced form. The light reaction would have the, the, uh, the, the ferredoxins and uh, the ferredoxin would now reduce the thyroidoxin. The thyroidoxin in an oxidized state is inactive. The moment it is reduced by the ferredoxin system, it now becomes activated. So, this uh, uh, modulation system is also extremely uh, important and uh, in a nutshell, it is the, the, the oxidized uh, form versus the reduced form and this is again modulated by the ferredoxin systems and again it has to be light modulated because unless we have the, the, the photo systems running, the, the, the ferredoxin would not be activated. Uh, in a nutshell, therefore, to summarize the modulation of the enzymes for Calvin cycle is in such a manner that they comprise dark reaction all right, but this dark reaction is not completely dark. It is also modulated by various forms of the reactions taking place during, during the light reaction. This is the basis of uh, the process of photosynthesis.